Welcome back to another episode of Lost in the Farmer's Market Garden Shorts, where today we are looking at this incredible specimen here. Look at this thing. It's amazing. It's one of the largest specimens we will drag into the lab to talk about because the southern sun right now is whooping our butt. It's like 90 plus degrees out there, and it's sunny, and it is hot as heck. In fact, this plant didn't weigh much because the soil in there is bone dry. Go figure. When the soil in a sage plant goes dry, you have problems. Now, as I mentioned, this is sage. Scientific name, Salvia officinalis. It is in the Lamiaceae family, which means it's a mint, essentially. It's in the mint family. The word salvia itself, despite what some books assert, and I have a few old garden books as a horticulturist that assert that Salvia is a corruption of a French word and blah 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 and English versus French. That's actually not where it came from, but salvia comes from the word, Latin word salvus. So safe, secure, and healthy. And when you have a sage plant for its, abil its antimicrobial abilities and its seasoning abilities, you certainly are all of those things. There are also two related words to salvus that mean similar things, and I don't think that's a coincidence. Sage is one of the best herbs humanity has ever encountered, and I'm willing to say that on the record. Now, it's native to the Mediterranean, and it is a hardy perennial in zones 4 through 7. Now, this is where it gets dicey, folks. In a few references, it says that it is not a perennial, and it'll die in the summer in zones 8 through 9. Y'all who think that can kiss my butt, okay? Yeah, that's vulgar, and I said it. I'm in zone 8A. Oh, my sage is doing just fine, thank you. And the ones in the ground are doing just fine. I'm going to cover the tricks and tips to growing sage in hotter climates and getting it to survive the summer, but we're going to save that for a moment. Now, on the USDA zones, it is said... Now, I like to refer to zone 8 as, because that's my specialty, that it is a specific care perennial. Period. 9 through 10, they in most sources assert that it is an annual, but I bet you if you use my specific care tricks, it'll be just fine. Sage is tougher than you think. I can hear my white sage laughing at people right now. But anyway, its soil pH preference is 6 through 7. Its exposure is full sun, and that's 8 plus hours or thereabouts, but it will also take partial. And in both cases, the one in the ground and the one that's sitting out on the grow trays being beautiful, this one because this is normally in a spot where it doesn't get shade until the evening, it's doing just fine. Obviously, it hasn't died in the summer. Yes, I'm a tad annoyed by that assertion. <clears throat> so anyway, its height can be one to three feet, and its width can be two to three feet, and it's doing most of that right now. So, it's... Other names are Common Sage, Culinary Sage, Dalmatian Sage, and Kitchen Sage. Now, there are a bunch of other name, common names lumped in there, like Golden Sage, blah, 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 but those are cultivated varieties of this particular sage. So I didn't count them in the AKAs because that's kind of cheating. So, let's get into this, shall we? This plant was described by Carl Linnaeus in 1753. Not bad. Sage has had many scientific names over the centuries as a result of this, and has had at least six name changes since 1940 alone, which is uh, absurd. I have some old horticulture books that do, in fact, refer to it and reference a lot of its old synonyms, which are old names that are no longer applicable but may appear in literature. And it's just, it's comically absurd how many different names plain old Sage has gotten. Were these people on something? I want to know. It makes no sense. It really doesn't. Now, um, here's a biological fact. The sage leaves, most people think of them as kind of slightly fuzzy or weirdly rough. Well, the slight hairs on sage leaves are called trichomes. And they serve a purpose. Firstly, they help shed water, but they also make it harder for insects to chew on it. And they may serve a purpose in keeping the essential oils present. Um, there's The school's out on that last one, but the la first two are pr pretty well regarded as fact. It's an interesting biological feature, and if you want to see it in an extreme, look up lamb's ear. 
that common cottage garden plant, which we may or may not do a redux video or recover, that um, is evergreen in this climate and has some seriously hairy leaves. And those are actually trichomes. So, it's also known that sage is part of the Fourth Thieves vinegar mix, which is kind of interesting because I've heard of Four Thieves oil and it may be in that as well. I'm not entirely sure. Y'all can correct me if I'm wrong on that. Now, what's interesting is the cultivars. And I, I said I'd get into this later, but we're getting into it. And, you know, here we are. So the cultivars that are basically Salvia officinalis, but with a cultivar name taped on the end, are Alba, which has pure white flowers. Okay. Aurea which has a gold, has golden colored foliage. That's commonly called golden sage. Bagarten sage, which is basically sage that rarely flowers, but has big, chunky, wide leaves, which is sort of like the uh, Helen von Stein lamb's ear, which has bigger leaves than your traditional lamb's ear. Extracta, spelled E-X-T-R-A-K-T-A, -T -T which is a variety that it produces much more essential oil, Though I question whether or not it's of the same quality as traditional sage that's not fancy. Because, boy, let me tell you, this sucker smells great. I moved it and it was like, oh, it's like brushing up against a rosemary. Anyway. Now, I'm going to butcher this. Icterina, which has a yellow green leaf variegation. And then Papyrusens, which is the purple sage which sometimes they call this plant purple sage, but realistically that's a cultivar of this plant, not this plant in specific. And then tricolor, which is both botanical Latin and its actual variety name, and that's tricolor sage, which has three shades of color on its leaves. Now, I'm gonna get into that thing I mentioned before about special care. First and foremost, sage is not complicated. I don't care what you think, it is not. It is a very easy plant to grow. The trick, is that you actually have to water the damn thing. <gasps> oh no. Yeah, you read those xeriscaping books that says you plant it and it's low water and blah, blah, blah. Do you honestly think I got all this fabulous growth by doing low water practices? I treated it exactly like I would treat a basil and look what I got. I got more growth out of this sage plant than I've gotten out of the sage plant in the ground in like six years. Now, here's the thing. It sounds nuts, but I put it in a spot where I would norm next to things that I'd normally have to water so that I too would have to water this plant. The white sage and it have shown explosive growth as a result of it. Their root systems are large and in charge, and that's the way it should be. You're watering for the root system so you can get the good stuff. Imagine the amount of sage harvest I'm going to get out of this plant before it stops growing for winter. Imagine the amount of flowers it's going to produce in the spring to produce nectar so that pollinators can come rolling in and can pollinate my early spring crops. Gonna be amazing. Now here's the low down deal. First and foremost, to get it to look like this, I cheated a little bit. This is actually three plants. I got three of those plants in little tiny cell packs and stuck them in this large pot. And I thought, I'll experiment and see what happens. So, I planted them, I watered them like a basil. Every time I fertilized the food crops, I fertilized the sage too. And it turns out, despite what all the books say about sage being self-reliant and not need no gardener and blah, 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 when you baby a sage plant, you get this kind of result. They are good for xeriscaping if you're not planning to harvest it for anything. But if you grow it like you would the more sensitive herbs or like you would a vegetable, you get explosive growth. Now the soil is nothing special. That's basic potting soil in here. There's nothing special in there. I did line the bottom with spent peat pots, but that's really just to reduce the amount of moisture and fertilizer loss. You know, that's nothing special. You don't need to do that. Additionally, this plant was out in full blazing sun and it's perfectly happy. The white sage from the video I did earlier, it is tripled in size. So this method works. I've been trying it with other things. This is how I get time to be explosively amazing in the hot. You know, basically what you're doing is you're countering the extreme heat and humidity by giving the plant more of what it needs so that when it's 
drawing more resources out of the soil, water, nutrients, whatever, they're being replaced. And there's extra, probably. And that's how you get a plant like this. So, when they say, oh, it's an annual in the hotter climates, you know what? You know where you can stick that trowel, son. Okay? That's not true. The one in the ground may be rangy, but it's still surviving. And in fact, I started applying the same method to it, despite it being in the ground, and I'm getting the same results. So clearly, sage is not an annual in zone 8 through 10. That is wrong. Now, you can apply these further south. There is one thing. If you're going to do it in the ground, I would advise amending the soil with composted manure or compost. Make the soil the best you can before you plant it, and then maintain that watering schedule, and then slacken off as you get into winter, or what passes for winter where you are, and you will get good results. You can't help the humidity, and you can't help the bugs, and you can't help the mosquitoes, and death and taxes, but you can have successful sage plants in the south. So, slam dunk, folks. I'm sure someone's going to be mad in the comments section, like, you can't tell me, blah, 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 but whatever. So, if you have any thoughts on growing culinary sage in the garden, in the southeast, or otherwise, please comment in the comment section. I'd like to hear what you do, or if you want more information about growing in the southeast with sage and plants that technically shouldn't grow here, according to blah blah blah, comment section. Now, beyond that, if you like this video, please hit the like button. If you haven't already, please subscribe. Also, in the video description at the end, you'll see a link to the Forge blog covering Forge foods, weeds you can eat, and so forth. And some of them are actually done as videos here, like I'm hoping to do a dandelion video at some point. So, there's that. Now, as always, folks, keep them growing, and thanks for watching.